So for the next two hours or so, we're going to cover post-tension podium slab design. Uh, just a precursor, this is fairly non-technical. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of the you know, minutia or third decimal points. This webinar is much more focused on kind of the uniqueness of a podium slab and the things to look out for and the things to especially look out for in terms of designing a PT slab versus a rebar only slab. Uh, not that it's numerically that much different than a typical two-way slab. Uh, let's say you're doing an office building. A uh, typical two-way PT slab is used all over the place. A podium slab just has some more load on it, but because you are supporting um, you know, four or five stories of wood, the plumbing, the electrical, all that kind of stuff deals with a lot of interaction effects that need to be detailed and accounted for to make sure your numerical design matches what your drawing show and what is actually going to be built in the field. So if you're interested more after this webinar, uh, my business partner and I have a book out. There is several chapters on two-way slabs and podium design specifically with a lot of photographs. So if you're interested in more on the topic, please look for a copy of that. So in general, podium slabs that we're going to discuss today are typically a separate foundation, let's call it, that's in the air, it's structurally supported. Typically there's parking or office below and a separate structure up above, typically metal studs or wood framing. Wood framing is the more typical choice. But the key aspect of the separate wood structure, we'll call it, does not stack load-bearing elements on the concrete column. So the slab has to transfer not only the lateral load, but also the vertical load of the structure, more importantly. Typically, two-way slabs are used as the floor system. Uh, One-way slabs and beams can. Uh, we've looked at that a few times, and I believe other people up north, let's say north being Washington, um, Seattle-ish, Oregon, stuff like that, have used long span structures, meaning the beams, let's go 60, 65 feet with a relatively thin slab for parking, which is very common for really large parking structures, let's say for airports or stadiums and stuff like that, or casinos. Um, but the quote unquote problem for podium slabs is they're usually pretty bouncy. If you've ever driven on one of those, regardless, you have a Prius or an F-250, uh, you know, something going 65, 60 feet is going to have a vibration. Now, the deflections are not large in magnitude, but any type of vibration is noticeable, especially in a living unit. And whenever we've tried to do it, the uh, slab and beam system with their thickness, the requirements for certain aspects of the design typically don't pencil out. Now, having said that, obviously, there's no reason you couldn't use one if that's just the better choice of your system. Most of the stuff still applies. But the vast majority of podium slabs that I see are the two-way slab uh, Variety. Now, as I mentioned before, there is deflection and path of travel for plumbing items with deeper beam systems. As I mentioned, the slab is designed for the vertical and lateral load transfer. And depending on your specialty, the engineers of the podium structure, meaning the concrete superstructure, are different than the uh, engineer for the wood structure. Uh, obviously, myself, I specialize more in concrete. We've done a large number of podium type structures. We've never done the wood on top. That's not our thing. Um, so, like I said, it's not forbidden. We've never had an issue with the city, but for the most part, for the usually for the most economical design, you get a concrete specialist, you get a wood specialist, just like anything else, and try to maximize, uh, but they're uh, maximize the bang for your buck. But the key point of this is they are treated in the building department and in the analysis as effectively two completely different structures. We've even had different architects before between top and bottom, so uh, lots of variation there. As I mentioned, due to the rigid stiffness per the ASC 7 requirements, the two buildings are separated, so the vertical mass and the vertical distribution does not go up into the wood structure. Obviously, there's no way a wood building could resist the vertical and lateral forces of a concrete structure. Um, typically, it's parking levels below the slab. A lot of times, these podiums are kind of built as little, you know, little towns or little cities. So you, you know, come in from a Friday after a week of working, you park your car. There may be a laundromat or a convenience store on those slabs. But then you park your car, you obviously walk up to your unit, and you're done for the hopefully, hopefully the weekend and have a nice weekend without having to use your car and you know causing more pollution in the world. Uh, we have done some that have subterranean garages and then you know targets or something else much more. Uh, you know, grandiose, and then the podium structure above, and then you have living units. So, again, the longer these go on, or the the more 
uh, you know, going into the future. These are becoming much more little towns and cities than just a place to live. Uh, from a design perspective, the big thing, and I'll cover this later, is the podium slab provides a fire separation. There's a change of occupancy, which typically means a three-hour separation for fire, and that needs to be accounted for in the PT design, much like anything else, and I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, the Biggest problem, for lack of a better word, is the coordination of the various traits. Now, you're building a foundation for four or five stories of wood. Plumbing, electrical, um, solar, Wi-Fi, lighting, you know, name everything that's in your house that has to run through your deck. Uh, toilets, kitchens, washer dryers, all these kind of things. Everything vents out or needs electricity or needs something from the levels below. 